tonight. A good one early in the Big Ten race with number 10, Indiana, paying a visit to number 11, Michigan State. And what they're excited about at the Breslin tonight, the return to the starting lineup of the team, please. That guard, will look this way tonight for Indiana, which comes in having lost only to Indiana State. They go with the senior A.J. Guyton, who is having a terrific year, 19 points per game, second in the Big Ten, and also second in three-point percentage. Michael Lewis and Dane Fife in the three-guard look with Jeffrey Newton, the shot-blocking specialist at forward, and Kirk Haston, much improved sophomore, also at forward. For Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans, Cleves, as you see, back as a starter with Charlie Bell in the backboard. Morris Peterson you think of as a high wire act. Ray Ducker, he leads the conference in three-point shooting. He is an all-around talent who has blossomed over the last two years. A.J. Granger and Andre Hudson join him on the front line. Big night for Tom Izzo. If he wins, that's 100 as the head coach of the Spartans. Already fourth in school history, and if Bob Knight wins tonight, that's 756 overall and 654 in 29 years at Indiana. The officiating tonight from Tom Rucker, Steve Wilmer, and Jody Sylvester. This has not been a favorite stop on the road for the Hoosiers. One in seven here at Breslin in the 90s, their only win nine years ago. And the Spartans control. Coming right out of Indiana, notoriously plays man to man. Peterson shows the three and takes the two. Well, Newton has got to learn. He's a young player. He's in a highly energized situation. Ball fakes, shot fakes are things that can get people out of position. Newton to Dane Five cutting in, but Newton stepped on the end line for the turnover. Well, Newton in the lineup so far. He's, he got taken for a ball fake, and he stepped out of bounds. Maybe feeling a little bit of the early pressure. Going right at the freshman, his eighth career start. Peterson out for Granger, now Cleves had it. He's quickly challenged by Guyton. Inside Hudson. Dave, what they'll do, they have Dane Fife that's guarding Maurice Peterson. That's the way they want him to start. A miss by Granger, rebounded by Kirk Haston. And you will hear the is zone, the student section, which uh, is back in force. Holiday break is over, and they have helped Make this a capacity house of 15,000 plus. Five drives and is cut off by Hudson. Back outside for Guyton. Pretty Bell solid defense. Guyton. Barely caught iron on the three. It comes right out to Lewis. Back inside and Newton is all alone. Well, that's why they want Newton in the lineup. He's probably one of the better athletes, though he's young. So he's getting a taste of big time basketball in the Big Ten. Already showing amazing shot blocking skills is new. Hudson almost lost it, putting it on the floor. Misses the layup. Lewis brings it down for Indiana. Uh, to Fife on the break. And fouled underneath the first Michigan State foul. Well, Mateen Cleves coming in tonight. Needing one assist to break his tie with Scott Skiles for the all-time lead here at Michigan State. Granger comes up with the steal. Leaves on the break. You see, that's what one of the things Michigan State does. They really get the ball from one end of the court to the other. Peterson gets into the teeth of the defense, can't get it to go. Both teams wanting to run early. Lewis challenges, misses with a left hand. The Spartans with Cleves in the middle. To Bell, shot won't go, still looking for the tie-breaking assist. And Jody Sylvester says Indiana ball. Well, Tom Izzo doesn't have to worry. At some point, Mateen Cleves will find the open man, and it probably will be Morris Peterson. I'm anxious because uh, Andre Hudson has got his right shoulder severely wrapped. He hurt that and didn't play in the game, didn't, didn't play much. And I, I'm concerned about it that if I'm Michigan State. Here's Haston, showing a great scoring touch. That one won't go. Haston, 20 or more, three of his last six games. Foul as Hudson goes inside, and Haston
Haston came down on. Yeah, Haston got it down there. Hudson actually did a solid job getting position on the transition, and then they'll just try to lob to him quickly before the defense can get there. Andre, the uh, junior from Crockett, Ohio. Now Peterson travels. And both teams a little bit sloppy well, on the offensive end. I think both teams are a little bit excited. They both know this is a big game. Basketball in the state of Tennessee out of Lobelville. Undefeated there as a high school senior. Mason is a guy they really like on the inside because more than anything, he can give them some inside scoring. Indiana doesn't normally get a lot. They normally get it their outside from A.J. Guyton. Inside, they kind of earn pieces. Leads for Bell down the baseline and misses the floater. Hudson is undercut. No foul. Out of bounds to Indiana. It's going to be a battle, you know that. So when you get a chance, Charlie Bell attacks the defense. When you get a chance to see Hudson had position, and no question about it, Lewis moved under him just as his feet got off the ground. Lewis Sylvester right there. Gave it to the Hoosiers. Newton gives it to Haston. Cleves not even looking at Haston. Senses that pass and comes up with the steal. Feeds Peterson, who's short. Still waiting for that assist, and they're going to make a shot at some point. Guyton, 360 spin, he misses. Good defense by Mateen to get back. Well on the drive, foul by Newton. Michigan State is always going to attack the basket. What they're different about, I, I did their games when they played in um, Puerto Rico. They didn't have the same tempo because Mateen gets the ball and he's looking ahead and is not afraid to make the pass. Charlie Bell actually became the point guard in, at that time, but now Charlie Bell can get out and run and try to score. Looking for an opportunity. Get out, push it up. That's on the miss. Mateen gets it, pushes up, and Bell takes it to the basket. And the official felt there was enough contact for a call. And Tom Izzo says, uh, don't look for Cleves to go 25, 30 minutes just yet. He's going with short bursts. He'll get him out there and see how it feels. Physically, the foot is 100%. Mentally, he still has to convince himself that it can stand up to all the cutting that he has to do as a point guard. I'm, I'm not sure it is. I think it's closer to 70%. I think it's structurally sound. I'm talking to, uh, to Tom Izzo. But the problem that you have to worry about, the muscles are not strong. Way off by Newton, and the Spartans throw away the outlet pass. And a timeout in a low-scoring beginning to our encounter in East Lansing tonight. Charlie Bell's case, they're going to become better players because of it. Because now they've learned how to step up a little bit. They've learned how to do a few different things, especially with the basketball. And yet getting in your comfort zone is very critical, I think, in, for any player in any sport. And the comfort zone for those guys is filling lanes and running and not having to think the game so much, being able to react. Let Mateen think the game, and you guys get to play the game. That's a really important point that you've got to make. The role definitions have not been established here. Morris Peterson did better against Iowa because he didn't have to think, because he was playing a little bit of guard with Mateen out. Now that Mateen's back, he's at a more natural position. Jeff Newton dribbles it off his foot and out of bounds. He got bumped. I mean, that's one of the things he's got to learn. He's got to be able to play through getting bumped. Fourth Indiana turnover. Good defense by Michigan State. Bell now the point guard. 
This is Aloysius and a Gagne. Freshman from Southfield, Michigan, on for the first time. Tom Rucker with the call against the Hoosiers. And Agagne is in because Andre Hudson's got to be struggling with that arm. He had it iced down yesterday. It's heavily bandaged today. Aloysius gives them the presence that they missed from losing Antonio Smith from that great team last year. Though he's a freshman, he's a big body with good strength. And you can see there Andre Hudson with that arm well wrapped. from three-point line. That, in fact, makes him right at 50%. 15 of 30 for the year for 6'9 inside player who can also obviously drift outside. Look at this. They've got uh, Mike Chappelle who's out there. He's about 6'7 as Dane Fife knocks down that three guarding A.J. Guyton. That's why Guyton hadn't been able to find a basket. Starting to miss six straight until the Granger shot. Now coming up short is Mike Chappelle, the Duke transfer, rebounded by... A.J. Guy, he pulls up, in and out on the three. On a transition, too. Well, tried to hit Chappelle in transition, and Fife got a hand on it, knocked it out. Now, Cleves right back in. He's had maybe two minutes or so, replaces Charlie Bell. Charlie Bell does a good job for them. He is, you know, more than anybody, I think he struggled. David Thomas, they tried to put in, who's in the game now, tried to get him to play point guard while Mateen was out. But Charlie Bell, last year, they wanted to get him to score. When Mateen got hurt, it was clear after they played in Puerto Rico, they had to make Charlie Bell the point guard, and now they've got to ask him to score again. He's making as much of a transition as anybody. Leaves inside, one dribble, and on a gun, knocks it down. Until one minute ago, was tied with the team Cleve. Scott Skiles of the Phoenix Suns. That coach joins us. Scott, did you see that? What do you think? Your, your record is now history. I saw it. I think he took a couple dribble rolls. Back to the ball. I agree. Scott, I agree with you. I'm sitting here. This is Quinn. I'm sitting here and saying, wait a minute. That's an assist. He took a, a dribble, got it out of position. But you got to be proud of how your university is doing now, Scott. I'm very proud, and I'm proud of the team. Uh, uh, and the other thing is, Quinn, he couldn't have done it against a better team. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Scott, uh, watching from afar, I'm not sure how much you get to see the Spartans. Your impressions as they go for national championship this year? Oh, I think they're, they have a very good team. The team coming back, of course, now healthy. Uh, him being out probably helped them. Hopefully in the long run here, getting other guys a lot of experience. And it's going to take them a little while to get back used to him. But uh, I look forward to be very strong down the stretch. All right, we're going to take one more look at it. I think Scott Skiles uh, may have a point here. Uh, you're not supposed to get an assist I'm if the, the scorer bar. takes a couple of dribbles. What? Oh, oh you took one. That's, that's good. That's a good play. Oh, yeah, right. That's a Michigan State assist. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, we want to thank you for joining us. Good luck, for, with, okay, good luck guys, to you in the season. Thanks, Scott. Scott Skiles, uh, the Phoenix Suns, uh, the man who just passed him. Michigan State record book. The team leaves. He will now set his sights on putting that record way out of reach. Launches one over Guyton. And oh, good effort by Chappelle. Good effort by Chappelle with a long rebound because you want Mateen Cleaves to be a jump shooter if you're the opposition. Intended for Adam Ballinger who just came in. It's Guyton fouled by Ballinger and he'll go for a three-point play.
His defender, Larry Richardson, up off his feet. Richardson not buying any of those things. You know, one of the things that's very different, and uh, Tom Izzo knows it, between the Indiana teams of old and, and this Indiana team, they play as good a defense as they've played in a very long time. I was talking to Tom Izzo, oddly enough, about this yesterday, and he says that's where they're very different because Indiana had been one of the top scoring teams in the conference. Now they guard because they can put pressure on you in the front in the back court. Teams hitting only 36%, scoring only 64 and a half per game against the Hoops. Oh, oh. Guyton starting to feel it maybe. But, well, it's a big time move. Two hard dribbles to clear yourself and create space is a big time move. Jason Richardson, the prize freshman, the McDonald's All-America from Saginaw, making his first appearance for the Spartans. Very athletic. Had the most athletic tip dunk I've ever seen in college basketball against Arizona. With the outside shot and a Gagne fouled as he brings in a one-handed rebound. A.J. Guyton has scored the last five Indiana points. A.J. Guyton, watch what happens to him when he gets this ball. I mean, when he makes the move, that's two hard dribbles, and he pulls up before the defense gets there. He loses bail, and watch, coming to attack is Peterson. He pulls up before him. That's a big-time play. The ability to do that is hard to teach. That shows some of the offensive skills of A.J. Guyton. And a Gagne replaced by A.J. Granger. tied for fourth in Big Ten history with the 52-53 Indiana team. 11-52 in the first half, Indiana defending well, dealing with the team Cleves and the Spartans and leading by two. The cheerleaders are tossing copies of Put it into 
Michigan State one of eight from three. They missed their last six from beyond the arc. This is the best three-point shooting team in the conference, too, so far, 39%. But they're getting well contested in terms of shots. They get very few shots without somebody contesting. Guyton gets a good one and drains his first three. Biggest lead for Indiana at five. Long pass to Hudson, hemmed in, and blocked by Fife, who was down there to help Hempston. Peterson 
little bit down this year from the line. 81% last year to 75% this year. And Short Bell almost tipped it back to Peterson. As a licensed con the assist o meter right up to date, he does have four assists and has not turned the ball over yet. I've been very, very active, but Indiana has thrown the ball in positions where Mateen can get it, get it up to Charlie Bell. It's been two or three of those, and you can see Mateen is happy because he knows his team is struggling to run the offense, but they can get out and transition. He has Mateen has his number one supporter here at the game. You know, Indiana has 16 turnovers. I'm sorry, 13 turnovers. They've given up 16 points off of those turnovers. It's one of the things Mateen Cleaves allows his team to do: convert those turnovers to baskets. Top to win with more turnovers turnovers than baskets made anywhere, especially here. Last uh, almost three minutes, Indiana held scoreless. Minute 15 to go in the half. They got this zone. They've got David Thomas on the top of the zone. He's 6'7". It's hard to get a shot over somebody that tall if you're only 6'1". Oh, well, they leave Haston alone just long enough to get the layup. Granger recovers and gets the save. And letting them play the way it should be. Kirk Haston, one for nine. This is coming off his career high, 28 against Penn State. Bell. Knocked out, touch last by Indiana. The local wine shop. assists, four points, and uh, his usual share of first half highlights. Well, he gives you those passes nobody can make. I mean, this is where he breaks the record right there, throwing it inside. Not many people can do that. Effort right there to chase that one down and get a basket. So that's some quickness there. So those are the kind of things he brings. But he brings leadership and motion to this team that nobody, including Charlie Bell, could bring to this team. Mateen has won. He's the two-time Big Ten player of the year. He has all kind of intangibles that Michigan State is going to really need as they go on their quest to win that third Big Ten championship in a row. Two-time player of the year. The only man to win the three times, Jerry Lucas at Ohio State, early 60s. A dive by Michael Lewis right in front of the Indiana bench. Out of bounds, and Bob Knight using that opportunity for a word with Steve Wilmer. Well, because he thought that Michael Lewis might have went out of bounds because he was knocked out of bounds, and it was right there. I mean, Michael Lewis goes, now watch David Thomas. Okay, he starts him. I'm not sure I agree. David Thomas just gives him an early bump. But I, there's some a part of the, the motion that he's had started that kept him going out of bounds. As physical as this game is being played, I'm not sure I'd make that call either. Difference is six seconds. Knocked away by five. Ahead it goes to Guyton, who wins the foot race with A.J. Granger. Count it. Granger's looking amazed, but I'll tell you what, all of a sudden, Indiana's defense is pretty solid on that play. And yeah, yeah, Tom Izzo knows it. Sure I mean, because Guyton gets the ball and pushes it up, but it was good anticipation on the pass. Ranger gets there. Oh, man, did it hurt his shoulder? No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Well, the basket uh, by A.J. Guyton ending four minutes without a field goal for Indiana, which dated back to his three-pointer, which was the last. Now he can finish off the 
three-point play and does and ties it to 28. Here's another place where Mateen is valued. You're trying to get the last shot of the half. He's very good at what happens, not on a design play, but if the play breaks down, he can make plays. Rizzo counting the clock down for him. Sets it up for Bell, a three-pointer. This guy knocked down a jumper. A.J. Guyton, 13 of Indiana's 28. Chris and Digger, we got a good one going in East Lansing. Well, Indiana out shooting Michigan State, which is uh, coming in the best three-point shooting team in the league. Not tonight, only two of nine. 13 turnovers leading to 16 of the 31 Michigan State points, the biggest factor. Ten Michigan State steals accounting for most of those 13 turnovers. Bell with 15, as you said, and Cleves five assists, the top numbers for the Spartans, and 13 of Indiana's 28 by this man, A.J. Guyton. Two terrific defensive teams. You're talking one shooting 40%, the other shooting 36%. So if turnovers are obviously going to be a big factor. The rebounding situation was Indiana was only down one, which is surprising because Michigan State, as the timeout is taken out by Michael Lewis, Michigan State is the best in the country in rebounding margin at 12.5. So for Indiana to be in that situation is pretty good for Bob Knight. Not much of a secret. Last couple of years, he has not been happy with his team defense, but he can't find much to complain about this year. Well, I think that that graphic speaks a load about what this team has been able to do. I think they've been able to get guys to, to collectively defend. And I, I heard one guy make a statement. It was not Coach Knight. You don't become a team until you defend because now you're starting to care about each other because individually, I don't think Indiana has great individual defenders. What they do well is they cover for each other so their team defense is superb. Cut their points allowed per game by about nine. Last in the Big Ten last year, 73.6, and it's about 64 and a half. And I like watching Tom Enzo's group play at Michigan State because they're very much a defensive warrior in the team because that's his mentality. The two things they have to do is defend and rebound if you want to play much for Tom Enzo. Good fine. Aston, nifty feed to Dean Five, who has eight points, and that will beef up Kirk Haste in line so far. One out of nine from the field. Hudson is fouled by Newton. Haste in also four of those uh, 13 first-half turnovers, but his first assist of the night couldn't look better. Well, Haste is not much for usually doing that, but somebody lost Dane Fight because you can see it looked like it was Charlie Bell because he's the one that chased in. But Haste did a good job turning to find the uh, open man on the backside of the defense. Now the Haston like line for Michigan State belongs to Andre Hudson. 0 for 2, no points, no rebounds, three turnovers in his 11th first half. Minute. And I've got to be on to something that the shoulder, which has been in a sling lately, has to be having an effect on it. There's no question. I mean, you don't bandage a shoulder that that big. I don't care, you know, if, if it's only a mild whatever. But when I came to shoot around, when we, when we were here yesterday, he had it ice. shoot it the first time, couldn't get the shot, so he throws a pass. It comes back to him, so he goes after the offense again. Really out of character the way he's played this year. He is much more solid than what he's coming up. Hudson comes up short over Hastings. Now Michael Lewis leads the three on two. Guyton over Granger. Now that, that's what, what people right. like about him at the next level. Uh, you see Michigan cool. State in the team, push it right back, so you've got to defend right now. Peterson just five first half points. The Michigan State scoring leader, that's a two. Well, that's one that has to be positive about Tom Izzo from his perspective. Bell scored big in the first half. You know Peterson will get going. Got 
a hand on it. Knocked it to a hustling Jeffrey Newton at the other end. On the 10th, Michigan State turnover. Newton, a no-look feed for Haston. Lost the handle. Lost it out of bounds. Defensively, you better get to him because he can drill a three. So a tight one in East Lansing. Michigan State clinging to a two-point lead early in the second half. Steve Alford, one of the most decorated Indiana names in their history, makes his return to Bloomington next Tuesday as his Iowa Hawkeyes take on the Hoosiers of Bob Knight at Assembly Hall. Gwen and I very much look forward to that one. That will be an emotional night. You know for the fans who cheered to offer it all the way to the national title in 87 for Steve himself to come back and coach against his mentor. Well, Indiana is, is you know, 
Buffalo is very proud of the players that they have produced as a state. But it'll be interesting because it, it, it appears that there's a, you know, obviously some problem between Steve Alford and Bob Knight. There hasn't been a lot of communication. So it's going to be a very interesting night, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to being a part of it, if you can believe that. Bell almost got that one to go off the spin. In five seconds. your foul on Dane Fife in second. Dane Fife is being asked to guard Charlie Bell. That's a really hard thing for him to do, but Bell did the right thing. Put it on the floor, seek any keep from getting to the basket. It took Charlie Bell a while to get the, the, the shots going. His first six points were all from the free throw line. Since then, 11 straight from the field until this minute. Well, if anything can happen to Charlie Bell, you see his numbers are at 17. I would worry that he may get tired. See, they can't play McKean for extended minutes, partially because of conditioning of his wind, but partially because of conditioning of his foot. If you stretch him out too long, the muscles won't be able to take it, and you run the risk of some kind of re-injury. Then Washington and Jared Odlin off the bench. David Thomas almost wiped it. Lewis kept oh. the way and got another three. If he's open, he'll knock down shots. Michael Lewis able to find A.J. Guyton. On his 40th free of the year, he ties it 40 to 40. 21 points from counting for A.J. Guyton. Long way to go. And Gagnier, Thomas, Ranger all day to size up that three. He can't get it. doing a good job. He's looking to break the all-time record for assists at Indiana. Who holds that, by the way? Some strange guy, but he finds A.J. Guyton, and Guyton drills the three. And if you're a guy who is assist, you're looking for your shooter. A.J. Guyton is a man I would be looking for all the time. Now he came in 81 assists behind you, partner. And he's averaged 148 the last two years. I've done a little math here. He, he may catch it. No, he no. Missed. He should pass me. It's time for that to go. And he deserves it because I'm telling you, he's had to really put up with a lot of things at Indiana. And no kid deserves that award, that kind of honor, more so than Michael Lewis. Left-handed with touch. A.J. Granger, just his second basket tonight. Breaks the tie. Indiana last led 25-24. To go in the first half. Barton has ended the first half on the run. Rangers played pretty much even here in the second half. Good job. You see, when Guyton gets the ball, if he, he they, Michigan State will run a guy, man and a half is what Tom Izzo told him to do. Odell. Tough defense by Anna Gagne. Oh, no. Even Jason Richardson couldn't bring that one in. Well, that's, that's a function of a team just having played with him a whole lot. I mean, if he'd have been playing with him the whole year, Richardson would have had a chance to get it. He throws this pass, and he throws it too far away from the basket. See how far? It's almost toward the backboard. That ball's got to go toward the rim. Well, that's the one you want to see. See, it's off the backboard angle. You always throw that one at the square and let the guy go get it. And everybody in this place is off their feet. Lee Rust on the team on that one. San Jose, California. He started uh, all the four games for them this year. Granger replaced by Hudson. Look at these two seasons to date, and there are a couple of things you'll never figure out. How did Indiana lose its own tournament game 
the Indiana State in Bloomington. And how did Wright State, a three and eight Wright State, ever beat Michigan State? Well, considering Michigan State has played so well, I mean, the only other teams they've lost to, when you think about it, is Kentucky, Texas, and Arizona. They lose to Wright State, and Tom Izzo knows it, for the same reason in Indiana loses. First of all, I think both of those teams probably played pretty pretty well. Indiana State, because it's an in-state game, and a game that Indiana State actually had a chance to win last year, and I think the Indiana players took it for granted. And Guyton, as I talked to Bob Knight, was just off. So he missed 16 straight shots again. Yeah, he said he, was, he just was nowhere to be found in the game. Leaves fouled in the Wright State game. Morris Peterson, two for 15. So he's going to be a leading scorer in their game. Exactly. But the, the, the other part that really hurt is neither one of them had a floor game, so they weren't very much involved. McKean Cleaves has a floor game. But you're watching him, now he's, he gets away because he stumbles on this. You know, you can just still see the rust. You know, his feet are ready to move, but the ball handling isn't quite there. Still able to get to the basket, though. 22 minutes. Tom Izzo indicated beforehand he would not let him get much more than 25, and he pretty much sounded like 30 minutes would be out of the question, but we got 23 to go. I would be I'm not a bad man. I think he's got a better chance to go 30 than he's got to go 25. If this stays close, I don't think there's much option. You don't want to lose one. The Big Ten is going to be so tough. You don't want to lose one at home. Where they have won 20 in a row. 54 and 12 in Tom Izzo's five years. Nice drive and left hand to finish by Lewis. Poor defensive help on the part of the Spartans. Lewis tried to pick him up, carry him in that Indiana State game. Hit his career high 19 points. Not quite enough. Only loss in the first 13. Guyton almost to steal. And Dane Fife, the Big Ten leader in steals, gets it and gets timeout call. I told you, he makes, he makes hustle plays. He, he will make winning game kind of plays because Guyton kind of pops it loose. And Peterson knew that there was going to be pressure. And then Peterson makes a, just a bad dribble. He goes behind the back to the defensive side. You usually go behind your back to go away from the defense. And then, and then Fife goes down, and he's looking to get a timeout as soon as he gets control. And I don't know if he had control, but the official said yes. Dave hey Barnett, Quinn Buckner, great start to Super Tuesday. Michigan State by 2, 628 to go. It's been a history-making night for one man, Mateen Cleaves, who with his first assist of the game has Scott Skiles for the career record here at Michigan State. And he continues now chart in Big Ten history. Only Bruce Parkinson of Purdue, Gary Grant of Michigan, and Illinois' Bruce Douglas are ahead. Well, that's a pretty elite group right there. Those are all the guys that could really find people. And I think as you look at the assist meter that has him down with six assists, but he's played 25 minutes. This is the Hoopster. The Hoopster is here. <laughs> the Hoops Malone. I thought we preempted him again to me. <laughs> We did it again. Haston. In the battle with Anagonye out of bounds, Michigan State ball. And you know, quietly, Anagonye has been big for them because Andre Hudson really hadn't been able to give him much play. Anagonye has already got eight rebounds. He's only got four points, but he's given him a strong inside presence. This is 26 minutes now for Cleves, with six minutes to go at the high end of what Izzo said that would probably be his limit tonight. Game's too big for that limit. Peterson, back iron, Odell. He can drink a little out off the bench for Indiana. Lewis all the way, short, saved by Granger to the wrong man, Odell. He's got a bruised thigh, so he hadn't been able to get a lot of time, but he was there on this play. The clock went out on both, on everything. The game clock went out on all sides, and it's 192 to 2. The losers, boy, they're playing some serious defense on that scoreboard. And only 87 seconds to go. Also, <laughs> there was a towel thrown that had to be cleaned up by Jody Sylvester. This is the second time this year this happened against 
Michigan State had this happen against Penn State uh, last week. But you know what? The crack yeah, Michigan, Michigan State, State facility operators got this back up fast. But you know, you've seen that. Oh, that can turn into 10 or 15 minutes. You, you never know when it's going to go back and, on. And you can blow the flow of a game. Well, that, it, it may not be there. That's what they did. It took two seconds on it. Yeah, it was at 35. You're taking it at three-quarter court. Good call by Tom Ruckin, the crew, Jody Sylvester, and uh, Steve Wellman. Good uh, experienced officiating crew in charge tonight. And back to work goes Cleves. You know what? When you have a game with teams that play defense like these two do, you got to have a lot of experience. Turn into a whistle fest, and uh, thankfully, neither is that. Well, if it does, it becomes a whistle fest early so they can get control of it. Leaves pass Guyton too hard. Washington out to Lewis, still tied at 51. Gotta find Guyton. There he is. <laughs> Up it goes. <laughs> and down it goes. <laughs> I'm it. He was deep, too. He was over by the bench and looking for it the entire time. Fourth three pointer of the game, 24 points. For A.J. Guyton. Went for the steal. Cleaves short off the glass. Washington another board. Well recovers. Guyton comes up short this time. And a few times. There are 40 to go. They have silenced at least momentarily to sell out East Lansing. A three point Indiana lead. Bell tries to tie it. Tries to follow his own shot. Can't do it, Indiana Bull. Well, you know what you're starting to see. Morris Peterson just showed up, starting to show up on the entire team. Hudson is back in the game, but they have not been able to, Tom Izzo's group has not been able to establish anything inside. They're primarily becoming a jump shooting team. And that's not working either. No, they're only 3 of 17 from the three-point line. Tip 
won't go for Haston. They're going to get it over the backbone. I mean, that was a solid basketball play. And I'm telling you from the very beginning, because Guyton gets the ball, and the thing you got to do when there's pressure being placed on you is you've got to back cut, and that's what he does. He back cuts, he gets the ball, and tries to go to his left. And you can see right there, Haston is in position and gets fouled over the back. And the foul is Peterson's fourth. Haston now two of four at the line. Michigan State has outscored Indiana by seven from the line. Indiana getting it done from the field, however. Michael Lewis has called the official to try to get something. Oh, I know what it was. It's when uh, Morris Peterson went down on the ground and A.J. Guyton got the ball. It's a wet spot. So he's trying to make sure that the wet spot gets wiped up so nobody gets hurt. Well, Steve Wilmer's shoe is not nearly as effective at that job <laughs> as a couple of well-placed towels. almost four minutes and it is the time of the game where uh, last year over and over the team Cleves did whatever was needed to stay up 26 minutes tonight 8.6 told you would be closer to 30 yep we may <laughs> get right there <laughs> this game has got to go closer to 30 because they've got to find a way to try to pull out a W Defense for offense. Uh, they get Peterson out with four fouls, so he'll have to play defense. That's a big rebound by Charlie Bell. And Haston doesn't block out pretty close. So, you know, you might see Richardson after going to run. He threw down because there was a bad block out. Now, they don't have Peterson. Thomas has checked in. That's because they, you're right. They made the offensive defense a switch. Bell all the way through, ending four and a half minutes without a basket for Michigan State. They're within four. 22 for Charlie Bell. Michigan State. And a Michigan State timeout. Well, it's been, it was a, a very worthwhile uh, substitution if you think about it from some perspective. But at any rate, Bell gets the ball. And Indiana cannot get there in time. That is really a tough shot by Charlie Bell. But he's been huge for the Spartan team all day. That gives him 22 points.
under 36 seconds. Picks up his fourth foul. Well, Tom Izzo was and trying to get eight. his team to foul for a couple of reasons. One, he wants to make sure he can get, see, he got Morris Peterson in the game. But Guyton takes the three here, and you see Odo able to go up because the only person that could really contest it was Mateen Cleave, and he may not have the strength to go up and, and really do anything with that. And you can see Granger was not a factor. That's a huge rebound. Now you've got two foul shots for Michael Lewis. And a good shooter, 80%, one and one. possessions unless you get it to somebody that's going to knock down the three. And you, Rangers, the guy you've got to watch out for that. Izzo calls time. He had Morris Peterson back on the floor, the league's leading three-point shooter. But the guy that they have called on the last couple of years over and over and over in situations like this, number 12. And time again last year. Groundhog Day, Penn State relit that shot over and over and over as he won it with less than a second to go in State College. And then uh, a little bit later, Minnesota experienced the same heartbreak and the same elation for Michigan State on the road. We also did it last year to Northwestern. Three game winners, Kentucky Auburn to follow. I don't know if tonight, though, friend, you, you ask to make that type of shot. I don't think he can get through it. I mean, and when I mean get through it, I don't think he can explode to the basket to finish it. He's tried it a couple of times, but I do know this about him. It is in his nature to compete to the very end. Don't be surprised if he tries it. But they can run it all the way down. They don't necessarily want to do that. Difference of only six tenths of a second on the clock. Hudson going up inside and count it, and he can tie it with a three-point play. puts it in. He's at the line for the top. No good, and Haston has it, and he's fouled with 20 seconds to go. So Andre Hudson unable to tie. A lot of time in this game. But I'm telling you, the fans went nuts. You can see Tom Izzo give the and the whole bitch is excited because they know that this has been a hard fought game, and they're in trouble. to go and a 20 game home winning streak and a 20 game Big Ten winning streak on the line and Indiana with a streak of its own, six straight away from Bloomington. Always a positive thing when you can get some W's on the road. Got some senior leadership. Boy, it has not been Kirk Hastings' night to remember, but he has made a couple of plays they absolutely had to have down the stretch. They're backed up by three in the Michigan State timeout. Michigan State. They're last with 15.2 seconds remaining. And when you look at three-point shooters, you look first of all at Peterson, but you might go to Charlie Bell. He's had the hot night. Not a bad three-point You know, A.J. Granger's a good shooter. See, and I don't think a lot of people know that. I think sometimes as a big defender, as you have with Hayson, who may guard him, or Jared Odo, they forget that. I'm sure Bob might have talked to his team about that, but he can step out and make shots. But at this point, you don't necessarily have to make a three-point shot. What you need to do is get the best look, take it. And, if, and then after that, you foul if this happens to be just a two-point shot. I don't think you have to shoot a three here. Well, if you do, uh, Granger is right at Peterson, 48%. So there are multiple threats if they decide to go that way. You have that much time remaining, and uh, as you say, it's not your only option to consider. No, I think what's important, though, is you take a look at the threes tonight, 39% for, for the Spartans. Is you, the best look you get, you take it, and then you chase it down. I mean, because there's no need to try to get a perfect shot, because at this point, you, you, there's, there's no value in that, that whole thing. So at this point... You got Peterson on the floor, Granger, and Mateen can make plays. 
We've got Kentucky and Auburn set to go in Alabama as soon as we finish our business here. They've reset the timeouts they had previously charged. One to Michigan State, they should have charged to Indiana. They do each have one timeout remaining. First rule is if there's any pressure, you got to get the ball inbound. So you hope that for Michigan State, they don't have to use a timeout for that. Indiana looks as though they've come out in the man-to-man. And they like the double screen for Morris Peterson if they can here. Reeves just does get it in. Peterson right up with the three. Oh, and now Indiana's better not to take time out. They'll play from here. 62, 62, eight seconds. Where's Guyton? Lewis finds him. Four seconds. Oh, he lost the ball. He lost it with two seconds to spare.
to its biggest test so far. Bad pass, Peterson. Good, good pulls down on defense. So good job right here running their offense. Get Granger in position. Odo does the wise thing. No need to foul him there. Granger has a solid inside spot. Taking to Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale there. 2.49 to go in overtime. One out of two by Peterson. Big rebound here by Lewis. Three point lead for Michigan State. It can be pretty big when you got Mateen Cleese running your offense. Three point lead. Along Guyton, Washington the pick. And the feed from Guyton. And in by Hudson. Solid defense by Michigan State. They switch it, they have to on Guyton. Washington takes the shot, and Newton goes over the back of Peterson. You're on defense until you get the rebound. And Michigan State did a good job of finding Guy and keeping him from getting the ball. Washington gets a wide open look. He can't put down. Newton really has very little chance to get that ball, but he comes over the back of Morris Peterson. Teams in the double bonus. Two shots on the double bonus. Morris Peterson started slow, only five points at the half. 14. 15. My team walked up to him and said to Morris, make this one. I'm sure they've said that kind of thing to each other quite a few times. Great players leaving college basketball early. Here are three great ones who stayed for their senior years. Peterson hits them both in overtime. The Spartans have it all the time for the points. David Thomas. And David Thomas will play defense, and Peterson will sit with his four foul. Well, they don't need any more points now. They need to defend, so that's why Thomas is in. You save Morris Peterson if you need to get some more points later. Indiana has taken four shots, all misses in the extra period. Guyton with a three. Got got fouled. Fouled. No way he misses that badly. Yes. Unless he gets fouled, and it is going to be on three. Yeah, I mean, Mateen got him, and, and he knew he'd made a mistake. No, they're going to call it on the bell. I don't know about that. Yeah, one. That didn't call. No. There's no way in the 
vicinity. And Michigan State better argue to get that change. Now they need change. This is going to be four on Bell. Leaves with two instead. Five four early Wildcats. Gets to Auburn. AJ Guyton. Rob Knight has always wished would get to the line more. Three for three tonight. Twenty-five points. It's hard for him to get to the line more. He's a jump shooter. Jump shooters don't get to the line. Guys that get to the basket get to the line. Have one more foul shooting the three. Got Morris Peterson coming back in for offense. One shot.
Chris, they're going to be hard pressed to match what we've seen tonight. Three point lead for Michigan State in overtime, 36 points. And at the end of the regulation, you walk through some of the three point uh, do they or do they not shoot options for Michigan State? What about Indiana? Well, at this point, I don't think Indiana has to shoot three point shots. I think this is one you get the best shot as quickly as you can, and then you play from there. Now you've got to look to try to find the person to foul. At this point, they've been able to get filled a pretty good group, but I'm probably going to look at and try to. Well, they foul right away. Morris Peterson, and that's why Tom Izzo ran him to the ball. So he figures he gets one of his most experienced shooters there. And but I'm not worried about a three-pointer. You got Jeffrey a lot of time Newton to three-pointers. Jeffrey Newton called for his fourth personal. Indiana has only four free throws by A.J. Guyton and two by Michael Lewis. Two two shots shots the the well, Guyton has missed his last four Jeffrey shots, and Indiana as a rule has missed their, Luke, I mean, Jim as a whole. Is has missed their last five and have them score since the 138 mark in regulation. Seventy-five percent for the year. Peterson goes well, the short on the first. Thirty-five. Aston. Or Jim and Evans. Four of eight tonight. Thomas for Hudson. Aston returns. One shot. Michigan State's second best free throw shooting team in the league. Yeah, yeah Michigan State is, is a guy Indiana, that when you play Indiana, Indiana Tyler normally Marcy. makes more than the opposition takes, but it looks like this eight. one, Michigan State's been able to get to the foul line, and particularly late in the game, that's what you want to be able to do. Kyle Hornsby on for Newton. Second shot drained by Morris Peterson. 17 points, four point game. Instead of having guys set his screens for him, that he takes Green off the dribble. He wasn't allowed to do that. And that's due to Michigan State and Tom Izzo's solid defense. You see, he goes right there. Mateen Cleaves is coming. Bell doesn't want to pick up his fist. He tries to avoid it. And then Granger goes up high to get the rebound and gets fouled and gets two shots. He's their best free throw shooter. 85% his first trip tonight, though. His 11 point. Well, he's been kind of interesting guy from the foul line. He started out at 45% as a freshman, 59% as a sophomore, 71% as a junior. So he's made considerable improvement from his freshman year. Almost unheard of improvement. Hard work does pay off. Five-point game, 13 seconds. Guyton. Air ball on the two. Rebounded by Thomas. And the streak. The streaks plural, in fact, apparently will continue. 20 straight in the conference, 20 straight here at the Breslin Center. And 100 for Tom Izzo will be in the books if they hang on the 508.9. And he was considering he's done it as fast as two other people. Bob Knight being one of them. And Tom Davis in, in the same length of time. So it's a pretty big deal. And you have all of those kind of things that come into play for the Michigan State Sparks that they can use as added incentive. But for Tom Izzo, you can see just exhausted. I mean, he looks like he played much more so than the team. He's very emotional over there. Two points of the night for Thomas and Tom Izzo obviously moved by the uh, the signs held up by the fans. Three-pointer Lewis, it's not over yet. 75-71, the foul on uh, Lewis with 2.8 seconds. I think, uh, they caught him by surprise and uh, got to him. Well, oh, the zone is not prime for Izzo. But he got very emotional. Ranger at the line. Double bonus gets two. When he took over for Judd Heathcote, a long-time assistant, they weren't really sure what they had in Tom Izzo, the head coach. There are no further questions. He's the national coach of the year for the last two years. A Big Ten record 33 wins last year. Made it to the Final Four. Most people 
his preseason pick to make it all the way to the title this year. And Peterson and Cleves get the hugs as they come out. Well, they all knew it was a, a chance for him to get this 100th victory. But he talked to Judd Heathcote all the time, the former coach here for the Spartans. It's interesting. He said, every time I talk to Judd, our team can't do a whole lot well. Well, by the, based on these numbers, they've been doing quite well over the time that Tom Izzo has been here. Take a look at Judd Heathcote. Coach Magic Johnson and their NCAA champion in 79. Spartans win this at the free throw line. 9 of 12 in the overtime. 21 straight at home. 21 straight in the Big Ten. 100 in the book for Tom Izzo. 77-71.